everyone and welcome back to a year in the TikTok of Fat Fairy Principessa. So here's the thing. Um, I was unfollowed. I don't know if she did this or if I did it on accident or if the system fucked up and that's why. We're going to assume that she like had me unfollow her, which is apparently something you can do on TikTok. So we're just going to wrap it up with this episode uh, on her and just call it done. Because I have no desire to get into another pissing match with anybody. And overall, she's very reasonable. And I don't want to push her in any way to become more in the in the realm of fat acceptance to the point of being intolerant of other people's views or anything. So we're just going to wrap it up with this one. And uh, let's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the video we left off on and we'll jump right into it. So I've decided I'm not going to do a stitch of this person because I don't need to be driving any more traffic to their page. But um, if you haven't noticed, it appears that Miss Pearl is back on TikTok. And hopefully she will be banned again in short order because she just cannot stop spewing hate all over the internet. But uh, in the meantime, a clip of hers that I've seen go the most viral is the one where she is, I guess, on this podcast that she's on. I don't really know anything about her content and I don't wish to know any more than I already do. And she poses the question or a challenge to the room, I'd say, where she says, name one woman who looks good at 300 pounds. I've seen many people that I follow and mutuals here on this app showing the proof that there are lots of hot women that are 300 pounds plus. But ultimately, I'm sure Pearl, if she saw those videos, would not agree that they do look good. Because, and I've talked about this, I mean, ad nauseum on this page, that attraction is subjective. We'd like to act as a society or believe that attraction is this definable thing, that there is objective truth about what is and isn't attractive to humans. And anyone who falls outside of that is just not attractive. And it's simply not true. I mean, she says even in the, the video that if you're 300 pounds, you are not going to get love as though there, there are no fat people who are in love. And I can personally confirm that there are plenty of people on this earth that are more attracted to larger bodies and furthermore, more attracted to people who have visible excess fat on those bodies. I really don't know why she would want to live in a world where anyone who lives like outside of the very narrow standard of Western beauty ideals is not going to be seen as attractive by anyone and will not find love because like... Quite frankly, if there's anything that proves my point that attraction is subjective, um, I, I made the mistake of visiting her page out of morbid curiosity and discovered that there are plenty of people on the internet who find Pearl attractive. And um, <clears throat> that does not line up with my objective truth, but you know, you go girl. Anyway, I've made a video about her before and the point is, is that like, you as one person cannot decide for society like whether or not people are attracted to somebody else. It might bother you that somebody that you find disgusting, because like, let's be clear, that's exactly what her issue is with fat people and her obsession with fat people is that she's grossed out by us. Um, it might bother you that people would be attracted to them and might choose them, but it doesn't mean that it, it's not happening. So yeah, I can't recommend going to her page, but I'm sure we are going to be seeing more ice cold takes from her coming across our For You pages in the near future. So Godspeed, everyone. I also just learned that she at least claims to be in her 20s, which is bleak. Sorry. So I have to say, because I think this is about as sassy as Pessa gets. And even while she was sassy, and yeah, she threw a little bit of of shade at Pearl, which is understandable. Pearl is so inflammatory. The Just from, like, the periphery amount of information I've been able to get on Pearl. Pearl is a very inflammatory character that says things specifically to spark outrage in an argument. So, the fact that this is the worst that Pessa gets, it just shows that she is a person of integrity, I think. Because, yeah, yeah, I know she threw some ageism and, and some, um beauty standards shade her way. Like, I get that. But we've even seen other fat acceptance creators say far worse. And overall, her message here is that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which I agree with 100%. I, well, I don't find 300 pound plus women pretty most of the time. That doesn't mean that I don't understand how other people can see them as beautiful. And I, the only thing I will say is that I don't know if that we as a society believe that there is an objective beauty st like standard. Like, that 
it is just this is what it takes to be beautiful there is a fashion beauty standard but even that changes quite a bit because if i mean back in the 90s during heroin chic no one would have thought a bbl was something desirable so i think it's largely dependent on the times what's in vogue fashion wise as well as some other mitigating factors and ultimately and I, I love that she kind of acknowledges this here, and she does show she does so while throwing shade at Pearl, which I kind of like, is that she's like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. She, Passive, clearly finds some of the, the her mutuals and the 300 plus pound women posting very beautiful, and Pearl, who other people find beautiful, she thinks is ugly, and I kind of love that she wrapped up a little bit of shade throwing in her examples, in her argument. Because what she said to Pearl wasn't cruel. She was simply saying, I don't think Pearl is pretty. Other people do. She acknowledges that other people find Pearl attractive, just that she doesn't. Which is the most polite version that's an Uno reverse card at Pearl. I just, I think it was well done. So that's my, that's my perspective on that. You're one to talk. Look how fat you are. Lois, men aren't fat. Only fat women are fat. Hi. So as much as I hate to keep giving Pearl attention, um, although maybe if she gets enough attention, her account will get banned again. So I guess just keep sending people her way. I've seen a lot of people talking lately about how her ex-boyfriend um, angry reacts or angry reactions. I'm not actually familiar with his content, but apparently Pearl and him used to date. And he's a plus size man. Um, and so a lot of people have been sort of acting like she's being hypocritical going after plus size women um, or that they think that because she was dumped by a plus size man that that is where her hatred of plus size people in general stems from. But I would disagree because I would be willing to bet that actually his size didn't really factor that much into their relationship at all because of a widely held societal belief that is reflected in that Family Guy clip. People joke all the time about, you know, live action sitcoms, fat guy, skinny wife. It's a trope. Everybody knows about this. And it is because women are reduced to what we look like and men are evaluated on a lot of other factors like their intelligence, earning potential, humor, etc. So I actually always really thought that the way that Peter frames it in that sentence is so like well put and telling only fat women are fat. Honestly, genius. And the reason that I think that that attitude towards fat women is much more tied to um, Pearl's feelings on the subject is because if you look at any of her content that is not uh, about fat people, which hard to believe that any of it exists, but it does, all of her content is either, well, transphobic, but this is also falls into that category. It's all misogyny. I mean, like it is all misogyny all the time. She's a complete pick me. She definitely loves like being the only respected woman in a room full of men. Um, and all, all of her content is just truly like trying to reinforce traditional gender roles and just hating on other women. She actually made a video recently that I saw where she like claimed to not gender the person when she was like, oh, name one person who looks good at 300 pounds. And everyone was like, no, go back and look at the video. You said name one girl who looks good at 300 pounds. She, from what I can tell, she does not talk about fat men in a disparaging way. I actually doubt that she would talk about any man in a disparaging way, except for maybe like Harry Styles or someone she doesn't deem masculine enough, or a man who has a partner that she doesn't think is hot enough for him. But that's pure conjecture. Anyway, I've just been seeing a lot of people talk about like, oh, you dated a plus size man, like how can you talk like this? And I think it's just really important that we remember that, you know, intersectionality is a thing and being a plus size man is not the same experience as being a plus size woman in society. She does not seem to hate plus size men uh, because she doesn't think it's their job to uphold societal beauty standards and, you know, give everybody a boner. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Also, just want to issue a quick disclaimer that I am speaking from a heteronormative point of view um, because Pearl only speaks from a heteronormative point of view. And I know that that difference and that double standard doesn't necessarily exist in the gay community. Fat gay men experience the same thing that fat women do, and that is because of the patriarchy and anyone who is trying to attract a male partner is supposed to ascribe to societal standards of beauty. So we're in the same boat there. Um, just want to put that out there. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, so I just want to um, cover like a couple of things with this. Are, I, I don't completely disagree with her, but I think that um, there are plenty of fat men that do deal with 
um, bullying and harassment because they are fat. It's less common. I will admit that it is less common. As for Pearl and that she doesn't think that the size played an overall role with, uh, the size of her partner didn't play a uh, much of a role in Pearl's relationship or her, um, hatred towards fat women and that it's more based in misogyny. I'm not saying that I don't think that that's a factor, but just want to throw something out there. I don't know anything about Pearl's previous relationship. I barely know anything about Pearl, but, um, I've seen enough episode of cheaters <laughs> to, to have an idea that maybe, maybe what happened is that Pearl was in the relationship with this plus size guy. And I don't know, maybe they had a fight, maybe things weren't going well in their relationship, or maybe he was just a piece of shit, who knows. But maybe he had an affair with a girl that was bigger than Pearl. I've seen enough episodes of Cheaters <laughs> where, like, the the women that the guys cheat on uh, their their girlfriends or whatever with can be very different than what their long-term partner looks like. And that often just seems to compound the emotional feeling for the one that was cheated on. And so, like, it's I've seen it with race, I've seen it with weight, and there were, there were a couple of Alabama ones in there, too, but we're, <laughs> we're not going to touch that one. The Like, during the confrontation, and I understand that's reality TV and a lot of it's set up, like, I get all, I get all that, but... I do think that there is a little bit of truth in there that sometimes the person that was cheated on will just grow a very generalized hatred for whatever class of, of person, whatever they fixate on, whatever was the most di different from them of their partner's affair partner. And that can cause like really toxic behavior later down the line. I want to be clear because this almost sounds like I'm defending, but I'm not. It's just a theory I wanted to throw out there of what if her partner cheated on her with a plus-size girl and that's part of what has fueled her hatred for plus-size women and her desperation for male approval. I'm just curious. Thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hi. It's been a long time since I've done like a long talky-talky video, um, ironically, because my mental health hasn't been fantastic and I really just haven't had... Uh, much to talk about so her the comment she's responding to says i'm a heck of a lot happier 90 pounds lighter at least not from a personal perspective but i saw this comment um this is like a russian nesting doll of uh responses response to a duet of a reaction to another video so <laughs> but the reaction video that this is responding to it's um ben carpenter who's a, a body positive fitness influencer i guess you could call him it's about um you know how changing your body size doesn't automatically make you happier and actually in like bodybuilding communities and people who are like hyper fit they might actually report um lower levels of body satisfaction because they're chasing you know an unattainable perfection and then you know i saw this comment and absolutely no hate to this person you know I started to type a response that I'm genuinely happy for this this person that feels better after having lost 90 pounds. And that can be for a variety of reasons. Maybe, you know, excess weight was exacerbating a chronic pain issue or you really were just like feeling low levels of self-esteem and losing that weight has made you feel better about yourself. But the point of the video was that that is not the situation for everyone. I've known several people throughout my life who have gone through drastic weight loss journeys and are really disappointed to find out that their self-esteem does not improve at all. While when I was younger, I was a lot thinner than I am now, although I was always thicker and curvier. I've talked about this a lot before. Um, and I always thought like, oh my God, if I gain another 20 pounds, I, I, like I couldn't imagine a future where like I continued to gain weight at the rate that I was gaining and that I could ever be happy or feel comfortable in my own skin. I've talked about this many times before. I feel more comfortable in my skin now than I did 50 plus pounds ago. That's because I did internal work. It's really hard to unlearn the fat phobia that was plaguing me for my entire life. To unlearn and reprogram lies that were living in the back of my head about what I was worth based on how I looked. I certainly don't know enough about this person to comment on their weight loss journey, but if you lose a significant amount of weight and it really improves your life, that's great. And I have to imagine that there was some sort of medical benefit for you to, to lose that weight, which is not always the case. 
But what is more likely than I lost 90 pounds and so now I'm happier? You probably adopted some lifestyle changes that contributed to an overall sense of well-being. If you are eating healthier and exercising more, then you will probably experience more energy, less pain, and often a byproduct of that is weight loss, although not always. And of course, if you do lose 90 pounds, then you might discover that people are treating you better. And so that might make you feel better about yourself and feel happier. But again, this is all speculation. I think that the thing is, is that this comment really misses the point of the video, which is that if you are chasing some specific number for external validation, it will not bring you joy. Thinner equals happier. It's not a guarantee. I'm glad it worked for you. I, I'm sorry. This was just a masterful fat acceptance response. And I don't disagree with her on a lot of her points. Actually, I, I can't think of anything off the off the top of my head. There was a, a little bit of a long clip, but I can't think of something immediately that that jumps out to me that I completely disagree with her on. There is a little bit of a sentiment that that narrative of losing weight doesn't mean you're healthy, which is true. Losing weight won't necessarily make you happy, which is also true. It's not that I disagree. I don't, I don't even know how to frame this exactly, but I do want to point out how much I love that she acknowledges that sometimes weight loss does help medical issues rather than denying that weight has anything to do with medical issues, that maybe it did improve their confidence. It's not, I think it's true that weight loss doesn't improve the confidence of anyone because of, sorry, of everyone, because for some people, there was a more deep-seated issue than just the weight that was causing them to have low self-body image issues. And she even acknowledges, although she, she tries to kind of finagle this where it's like not always the case, uh, and I think this is like the one sticking point where I, I might, I, I kind of disagree with her uh, just a tad bit on, is that, you know, the healthy habits eating right and exercising often leads to weight loss. And she says that's not always the case. And to a degree, I, I agree with her that just eating healthy and exercising won't necessarily lead to weight loss, but eating in a caloric deficit will, and I don't feel like she would necessarily disagree with that. And the, the argument would change from there, but she wasn't necessarily covering that specifically, so I'm not gonna necessarily address that. I just appreciate how much she validates one person's experience while sim simply adding that that's not the experience for everyone. If more fat acceptance people were like this, I would not have my channel. There just would be no point because this contains no misinformation that I can I can tell. Um, she's pretty careful with her wording. She's even if there there is like a touch of misinformation there that would need to be corrected. It's rather light and. I know I didn't I didn't see any specific misinformation. She's very much just trying to catch it in the uh, each person is different category, which is very true. So I I just oh, she's such a breath of fresh air. I mean, really. Hi, I have a lot to say about this comment, so I think it's probably so the comment she's responding to says, "I hope you aren't suggesting fat people are entitled to other people's attraction." No one is, anyone is allowed to be attracted to whomever they like. Now, before we start this, I just want to say I don't know which video this person is responding to. So far from what I've seen from Pessa is, she's not necessarily saying that anyone's entitled to an attraction, just that some people find fat people attractive, which is true. Probably safe to say that this is going to take me longer than three minutes, so uh, apologies in advance. So I'll start by saying that, as usual, I'm not trying to put anybody on blast here, and I'm going to decide to come at this conversation from an assumption of good intent, though I think that might be being a little bit generous, but whatever, let's talk about it. So in the video that this comment is from, um, at no point do I say anything like, I am entitled to your attraction, fat people are entitled to your attraction. In fact, multiple times in that video, I say, if you meet a fat person, you're not attracted to them, that's okay, and it's not necessarily fat phobic. What I'm actually talking about being problematic is when people make blanket statements and decide that they're not open to dating members of any particular demographic group based on their identity in that demographic group. The first comment on this thread also implies that I'm claiming that this is a social justice issue somehow, and I, I didn't say that at all. I do think that access to love and relationships is a basic human right, but we can't control that. All that being said, this idea of entitled to attraction, not something I ever said. 
And no, I don't think anyone is entitled to attraction, but I do believe that every human being on this earth has experienced someone being attracted to them, whether or not they know it. We love to act as a society that there is a definable set of characteristics that is attractive and anything outside of that isn't attractive and that it's, you know, scientifically clear cut. And that's not the case. Attraction is person to person. I have found myself surprised by my attraction to people that don't fall into my, you know, typical physical type or preferences because attraction is not a, an objective definable thing. So while I don't at any point claim that anyone is entitled to attraction, I do believe that everyone in their lives has had someone attracted to them. And if you don't feel like you've experienced that, I'm really sorry, but someone in their life has seen you and be like, oh, I promise. So that all being said, that's really not what I'm talking about in that video. What I am talking about is societal expectations and the way that we allow that to influence who we date and who we would like to say that we're attracted to. Now, I've heard countless stories on this app and experienced in my own life plenty of instances where people are attracted to fat people, fat women and fat femmes in particular, and then don't want to be seen publicly dating them. And I do actually think that there's a direct correlation between those people and the people who say things like no fatties in their profile. And I hope that I've made it clear that there is a distinction between I prefer fit thin bodies versus no fatties. Like there's a difference in the way that that's being expressed. So as I predicted, I'm running low on time, but I do also want to talk about this word entitled because it's come up more than once on my page. And I think it's something that we see a lot of times whenever fat people express a desire to be desired or a preference. And entitled is a word that we tend to use when we think somebody doesn't deserve something. So while I do want to assume positive intent in this comment, I think you should examine why you felt the need to leave it. So my guess is that this comment was on that video about preferences and how preferences should be inclusionary versus exclusionary. And I actually feel like she answered one of my questions of what if someone said they preferred thin bodied women. And she even said that if you like fit bodies, which not quite the same as thin, but still, still, it, I think it applies. And that that's the, her big issue was the exclusionary language, which I, I gotta be honest, I respect her for. Like this was very delicately put a nuanced way to have that conversation and I agree I don't think that she said that I've seen fat acceptance creators with an entitlement of people should be attracted to fat people I did not I have not got that from Pessa she's very much just a you can have preferences without being a dickhead I don't I don't really have a problem with anything she said here so I'm, I'm curious if you guys had an issue with anything she said please leave it in the comments but God, she's so respectful. I I really like her. Okay, I have a couple more things to say about this. If you missed the first of this two-part video, you can click on this comment, but um, basically I'm just rambling about desirability politics per usual. But basically the first part of this video is I'm responding to a comment where someone says, uh, I hope that you're not implying that fat people are entitled to attraction. And my, my main thesis statement, honestly, of that first video is that, uh, no, I didn't say anybody's entitled to attraction, but I think everybody has experienced people being attracted to them. Um, what I, what I do really believe that everyone is entitled to, or at least I don't like the word entitled, but I believe that every person deserves is love. And there are groups in our society that are disproportionately being denied access to love and relationships based on their identities within certain demographic groups. Now, again, while nobody is forced to be attracted to another person, there are plenty of people who are attracted to fat people. There are plenty of fat people that I know that have people that are into them in every way that a person can be into them and they still don't want to date them. So what I'm really trying to say is that very often when people, you know, say point blank, I will not date a fat person, there's a lot more to do with how they want to be seen in society rather than I'm just not attracted to fat bodies. Because if it were really that simple, you wouldn't feel the need to announce it. You see a lot on the more like dating forward pages on this, on this app, like Amelia Sampson, for example, when people are making those claims like on their Tinder profile, it's like, it's as simple as just not swiping right on people that you're not attracted to. And anybody who gets upset that they're being swiped right on by a lot of fat women that's that one always boggles the mind it's like like if you're not attracted to them that's fine but like it does it need to be like embarrassing or disgusting to you that there are fat women that are into you like shouldn't it just be flattering even if it's not someone you're attracted to so it's just it's the anger and like the 
spewing of vitriol that that we get when we have you know the audacity to express attraction because quite frankly the issue is that so many men are paying for tinder gold and so they know that we're swiping right on them before we know because we don't pay for tinder gold <laughs> and it kind of defeats the entire purpose of tinder uh and the reason i downloaded it in the first place when it first came out but that's a whole another conversation for another day so when they're going through you know the list of people who have swiped right on them that they paid to see and they see you know disproportionately as larger women in that and they get upset it's like well <laughs> i'm very often hit on by people that i'm not interested in and that are you know not the people in the room that i really want to be hitting on me it doesn't make me angry at them I thought this was going to be a shorter one, but um, I, I just, I went off on a tangent. I believe that every human being that wants it is deserving of romantic love. And while we cannot tell people who they are supposed to be attracted to, what is happening is that people who are attracted to us are not dating us because of the society in which we live. And that's messed up. I don't have a solution. I thought it would get better as I got older, but it hasn't. Yeah, I don't know. That's it for now, I guess. <laughs> okay. So the whole um, argument of... Uh, men that are attracted to you in every way are not dating you because of societal pressures. I don't know how to respond to that one, so I'm not going to. I just want to comment a little bit on the Tinder thing because that that kind of opened up a realization that I didn't I didn't realize the the putting no fatties comment on the on the profile, why that was such an issue and it made a bit more sense to me here because it's saying I, I didn't know what no fatties really meant on, on Tinder. I don't use Tinder. But the saying that so that way larger women don't swipe right on them, that's fucking stupid. That I have to agree. That's that's fucking stupid. That kind of reminds me of the people that post on and not just on TikTok. I've seen it on Tumblr, I've seen it on Twitter, I've seen it on fucking feel like Instagram as well. I haven't, I don't remember seeing it on YouTube or Reddit or anything, but this whole concept of if you don't believe in XYZ or you're, you do believe in XYZ, then don't even follow me. That's, it's social media. You're participating in the way that the system is set up. And if you don't like that, get off the platform. Like that's kind of how I feel. I really hate the one, the, the comments that are like, if you don't, do XYZ. If you don't agree with everything that I'm saying, then unfollow me. If you don't, like, that's that's not how social media works. So, it, in a way, that the men putting no fatties on their profile in uh, hopes that will tell fat women to not swipe right on them, that's not the way the platform works, you fuckhead. Like, that, that made a connection for me. Curious what your opinions are were on that other point that I mentioned, but that was that was the the exclusionary comment that she was making makes a bit more sense to me now. I thought that was interesting. Hi. Oh boy, what a week it has been in the body positive sphere of TikTok. So let's talk about it. So in case you are not caught up on what's happening, uh, there's been a lot of discourse and splintering in the body positivity community here on this app, and I guess probably social media in general. Um, because some creators who have built their platform on body positivity and on their experiences living in a larger body are speaking about body positivity um, from a place of misunderstanding the movement. And a lot of my mutuals and other people that I follow here on this app have talked a lot about the origins of the body positivity movement and somehow that that has gotten like erased or bastardized in a lot of the conversations that we have around it, which is to say that body positivity was started by people in the most marginalized bodies to liberate and allow acceptance for people in those marginalized bodies, basically fat black women and femmes. I am not a scholar in any of this information, so I will just echo everyone's recommendation here on the internet and a book that really changed my life, Fearing the Black Body by Sabrina Strings, that talks about the intersectionality between uh, fat phobia and racism and where that all comes from. Really worldview changing stuff. Brilliant read. But per usual, since I'm not a scholar in this area and I'm not you know, that well-versed in this information, I'm gonna talk about myself and my personal experience. When so before we get into the personal experience bit, I do want to say that the concept of the body positive movement being started by fat black femmes was, is something that I can't find like the definitive source for because that seems to have been invented after the body positivity like rose 
more into the public eye, and I haven't found anything pre like 2015 that says it was started by fat black femmes. More often, what I see was that it was just about you know accepting. It was more couched in. I don't know if it was a disability movement or or something where it was more about just accepting things that you can't change, which was then got generalized to weight as well. Another version of it that I've seen is that it was an offshoot of NAFA and therefore stems back to more straight white men uh, that liked plus size women. So I've seen like three different explanations for the origins of body positive body positivity. I don't know which one is right, but I just wanted to put that out there that there are, I've seen three different narratives on the origin of body positivity. Maybe we'll do a deep dive into the origins at some point, but that's, I've seen three different origin stories for the movement. As for Fearing the Black Body, Sam at Every Size did a fantastic deep dive into that book uh, at, from a historical perspective and how the author like conflates things or gets some things wrong or off or, or, or misrepresentative of actual historical events. So I would highly recommend you going to check out that if you keep hearing about Fearing the Black Body and you've never seen the breakdown of the book. And responding to this. So for me, the most controversial claims that are coming from these creators that again, have made their, their careers and platforms on body positivity, is that body positivity encourages you to disregard your health. Um, and also that it's trendy to be fat. <laughs> I, just, I honestly, like, it, I, I have to laugh at that. Like, honestly, I probably have to commend them on decolonizing their feeds so much that they're seeing so much fat positive content that it feels maybe to them like being fat is trendy. Um, I would say that it is, I, I understand what she's saying here. I'm not saying that it, this isn't a hard disagree toward her. I just want to say that I see what some of the people mean when they say that being fat has become trendy because we do have people like Tess Holiday, and there's just been a general more movement in advertising and media that tends to lean more towards embracing obesity in a very positive light, and that can create a sense of fat is trendy. And to a certain extent, fat is in a very small way, a uh, new diversity thing that people are latching on to. Benefit of the doubt, I guess. It really does not take too hard of a look around or too deep of a dive to really confirm, like, it's absolutely not trendy to be fat. What? And I can talk till I'm blue in the face about the fact that you cannot uh, discern someone's health just by looking at the size of their body. And also ultimately that uh, someone's health other than your own, especially like if you don't know them and they're not, you know, <laughs> someone that you love, like it's truly none of your business. But for myself and my personal experience, um, you know, body positivity did teach me to interrogate uh, my motivations behind intentional weight loss. And if it has something to do with just like my aesthetic, that you know, we got to investigate that fat phobia. But the movement and the creators that I follow have never said anything like disregard your health, like don't exercise, eat nothing but McDonald's. Like it's just the idea that that's the messaging is just such a fallacy and it kind of makes me insane. Like more often than Again, I understand what she's saying because a lot of the body positivity crowd who are plus size aren't necessarily speaking this, but there are people that are advocating for, you know, eating... I I remember God this was this was about a year ago but I remember on like the Fat Logic subreddit there was something about comparing Twinkies to fruit as though they are equal because Twinkies promote mental health or some bullshit like that like I remember this this whole thing where it was saying that there I think it was under the guise of there's no good and bad foods um, and therefore. Because there's no good and bad foods, all foods are equal nutritionally, which wasn't, or at the very least, you know, it's like your body can't tell the difference when it's like, yes, it absolutely can. It can gain far more nutrients from an apple than it can from a Twinkie. So that's, I think, where that comes in. I follow creators that are talking about embracing loving movement and feeding your body nourishing things and taking care of yourself, whether or not that leads to weight loss. I guess I'm going to need a part two. And it's great that she sees those creators, and those creators aren't the ones that are being referenced in terms of promoting obesity or, or things like that. When it's like actual nourishing food, when it is whole foods, fruits, veggies, grains, meats, 
um, dairy, that sort of thing. It's, but there are creators that are promoting eating processed food as just as good as the whole foods. So it's, I'm glad that she didn't get sucked into that, but there is that realm on the internet that a lot of people have been exposed to, and that's often what they're referring to when they come out against the fat acceptance movement and the body, body positivity movement by extension. Okay, I'm back. One of these days I'm going to get the hang of TikTok and like figure out how to distill my point in three minutes or less. Um, but in the meantime, I created a new playlist on this. I think I'm going to have a lot of things to ramble about when it comes to body positivity. So um, this will just be the second part for today. And then I'm sure we'll come back to this again. So if you check out part one or if you missed part one, we're talking about this. Um, it's not new, but this this like current hotbed of discourse that we're having about body positivity here on TikTok right now while I eat a can of soup. So again, if you've missed what's going on, um, there are some creators who have made their platforms living in larger bodies and talking about body positivity that are now kind of pushing back against the movement, claiming that um, it encourages people to disregard their health because it is somehow trendy to be fat. I truly can't get through <laughs> that sentence without laughing. And I talked in part one about why that's um, not true and not the point of the movement at all. And what I intended to do was talk about my personal experience with it. So that's what we're going to do here. I've talked a lot before on this page about how I was very uncomfortable in my own skin when I was younger and I was not necessarily plus size yet, but I was always curvy. I was always bigger than all of my girlfriends. And you know, when I was a teenager in the early 2000s, uh, you know, it was like we were coming off of heroin chic a little bit, but it was still, I mean, super skinny was it. There was absolutely no appreciation for like not even big butts yet. <laughs> so for the majority of my life, I have felt terrible about myself. As a teenager, I was a dancer. I was constantly on diets. I was working out all the time. I was still not the size I wanted to be. And I hated myself for that. I wasted so much time and mental energy just wishing that my thighs would magically shrink or that my pooch of low of fat in my lower stomach would flatten out. All while committing very hard to diet and exercise, sometimes leaning all the way into disordered eating. And it would not happen for me because of my genetic makeup and some medical stuff. In fact, the older I got, I continued to gain weight, which is extremely normal. Like very few people are as thin as they were in high school. And the more weight that I would gain in the way that my body would change and the fact that I would have to get rid of clothes, buy bigger sizes and eventually move into a different section or a different store entirely, it destroyed my self-confidence. Meanwhile, my concerns were being consistently disregarded by medical professionals. And I started to notice that I was treated differently than I was in my younger and thinner days. So when the body positivity movement started to become more mainstream and we started to see more plus size models, plus size, that was huge for me and my ability to begin to see a future where I might love myself because it did not happen right away. And the messaging was always body diversity is normal. Like we cannot all achieve the same result. You cannot actually remove cellulite. That's a myth. And if you starve yourself and exercise only as punishment, even if you do reach your body goals, it's not going to result in you loving yourself. Body positivity made space for me to love myself. I still haven't even gotten to my point. Oh my God. So when it comes to the the weight loss, I'm glad that this worked for her to make her feel more comfortable and, and mentally stable and, and all of that. And... The, the only thing I will say here, and maybe this was just based off her personal experience, but it felt like she was talking a bit generally about starving yourself and exercising only as punishment. That's not the only way to diet. You know, it's diets come in all shapes and forms, and for a diet to be sustainable, it's baby steps. Like I've said, I am going one day a week right now where I don't have any processed sugar, and that's challenging for me but it's the right amount of challenging so i will keep doing this until it is no longer challenging for me and then i'll go two days a week without having any processed sugar and just only uh, natural sugar from fruit so it's a series i would say that one of the biggest things that i see in fat acceptance spaces and i think is where this whole like diet culture thing comes in is that the fast fixes are diet culture, but being on a diet isn't necessarily diet culture. You can be on small baby step changes that are part of an overarching effort to, and that can be to lose weight. That can just to be healthier. It's up to each person personally, what they want to do. 
And exercising doesn't always necessarily have to be punishment. I used to hate strength training and stuff and so I would always keep it to like five minutes and that's slowly grown and I've actually really grown to like strength training and lifting weights and all that stuff. So it's about finding what's right for you. It's about not expecting fast results. This is a very long process that can last a lifetime. So keeping that in mind, I think more than anything, I think the biggest detriment to healthy lifestyles is that we are in, in an age of instant gratification and the body just doesn't work like that. Not in a sustainable way, at least. And that's my opinion. Okay, I don't care if I ramble too long to get to my point in this video. This is the last part I'm doing today. Here's the part where I waste too much time recapping. Um, we're talking about the uh, discourse that's going on around body positivity right now and just really my personal experiences with it and why uh, some of the claims that people are making about body positivity are false. So in part two, I talked a lot about my journey with my own body and my self-esteem um, and started to touch on the fact that when body positivity became more mainstream, it really, it changed my life. And of course, I will never forget the first time I ever heard Lizzo talk about being body neutral versus just body positive and how, you know, like what we look like, we place so much importance on that. And so not only like just like accepting and loving our bodies for what they look like, but also being like, okay, my body also carries me around. It is the vessel for my soul and it allows me to breathe and pick up babies and walk the boardwalk. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. So yeah, I know that there are a lot of creators out there that make really loud claims about how any intentional weight loss is inherently fat phobic. And while I understand and ultimately agree with that point, I understand why that's also a very alienating thing to say. So for me personally, I've been in a little bit of a depressive period and I have really just not been doing any kind of loving movement and I've also been eating really poorly. And I think anyone who doesn't live in a stick thin body knows that we can feel those kind of micro fluctuations in our body. Like I haven't necessarily gained weight, like I haven't gone up a pant size or anything, but I just like feel like my thighs are like, like squishing together just a little bit more than usual or like I just feel like an extra pressure when I button my jeans. I've also been experiencing more aches and pains because I'm not like, you know, motion as lotion, baby. The weight gain itself doesn't necessarily bother me, but I am making the decision to get back into doing some loving movement every single day and being a little bit more intentional about the things that I eat. And what will likely happen is that my body will reach its equilibrium again and I will drop a couple of pounds just kind of organically. Ever since I embraced body positivity and body neutrality, it's when I first started losing weight by accident ever in my life. P.S. I think that the misconception that's being perpetuated about body positivity right now is that like somehow body positivity and those creators told me like, no, definitely eat more McDonald's and stop taking your daily mental health walk, which um, did not happen. What the movement did do for me is that when I have been feeling those changes in my body and then kind of take mental stock of like how I've been behaving over the last few weeks, I didn't beat myself up and go like, oh, you disgusting, lazy monster. Like, how could you let this happen? Like I did every time I felt myself gain any kind of weight in my 20s. But we finally arrived at the point. Not only did body positivity allow me to have compassion for myself when I'm not taking the best care of myself, but it also showed me that even if I reinstate these healthy behaviors and I don't lose any weight, that's okay because weight loss should not be the point of healthy behavior. Okay, I don't care if I... Okay, so in the terms of weight loss not being the point of healthy behavior... That, that's fine. I can totally get behind that. I found it interesting I that she agrees that any amount of intentional weight loss is fat phobic, that she ultimately agrees with that. And yet, I don't know, it seems like she realized that she was gaining a little bit of weight, so she went to reinstate those healthy behaviors. And she's treating the weight loss as a byproduct, but to me, it just seems like that would also be the point, and she's trying to sidestep that a little bit. And I don't mean that in a an attacking sort of way, this is just my my perspective, listening to her. Um, when it comes to arguing that the body positivity movement was never like, oh, you don't need to eat healthy, you need to eat m more McDonald's, there are those offshoots. There are. There are the offshoots that, that go even more extreme and are like, that, that they can't conceptualize. We've seen fat acceptance creators that can't conceptualize that maybe you like vegetables. There are fat, accept fat acceptance creators that um, don't understand that maybe you just want less food. And instead that maybe you're, you're starving yourself. They try to frame it like that. 
So there are these offshoots in the movement that are, in fact, pushing those narratives. I'm glad that it did not happen for you. And I appreciate that she can acknowledge that the idea of all intentional weight loss is fat phobic is an alienating concept that most people can't get behind. I like at least the realism there. Um, I do wish that they, that the fat acceptance crew would realize that by trying to say that losing weight is fat phobic, it's almost like you're trying to shame people out of not losing weight, which to me trespasses a little bit on the concept of body autonomy. It, it feels a little bit like a manipulation there to try to control what other people do with their body. That's my perspective, and I realize that some people are going to disagree with that. But that's that's where I come down on that, on on the it's fat phobic to intentionally lose weight. I think that that it starts to become a body autonomy issue when you're trying to shame people out of not losing weight be when they want to. All right, I was actually gonna look for one more to finish off this video, but we've actually reached it. We have we have reached the end of fat fairy principessa of everything that I was gonna respond to. So we're just gonna end it here then. This will be the only video this week because I learned that trying to do two videos last week was a bit overwhelming with some other stuff that I'm dealing with right now that I can't go into. Um, when it comes to my weight, I was able to maintain this week, which I'm calling good because it's been a struggle getting back into the realm of healthy eating and exercise. I have, I did exercise more this week than I did last week, and I've definitely eaten better this week than I did last week, but it still feels like it's a process of getting back into that those habits. I've also been playing Jack Jan, which is a new Otome game, which I fucking love, and I've learned that I don't really want to make reaction videos for the, the Dumping Ground channel anymore just because it didn't really work. It was an idea that didn't just did not pan out well for me, and I learned that I didn't have fun editing the videos. So I'm going to go back to just talking a little bit about it at the end of these videos because it's fun. And I finished uh, So, I finished his route, uh, Childhood Friends, fucking love it. Was a little concerned when we got some Yandere shit. Wasn't expecting that. Some people thought his Yandere moments were cute. It freaked me the fuck out. But I also didn't like Toma from Amnesia Memories. If you are subscribed to my Dumping Ground channel, know though that I am doing a Let's Play of Amnesia Memories, and it's commenter choice. So the first video is still up. No one's <laughs> seen it as far as I know, which is fine. Like, if, if it's your thing, check it out. If it's not, don't worry about it. But, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. I don't really have much to comment on in my personal life. Things are very much at a, at a standstill for a variety of things. Um, and I am currently working through summer quarter classes. It's the last quarter I have to do. Thank God. And I'm just kind of starting to fall into my summer routine, trying to figure out what my summer routine is. So I don't really have a whole lot to say for this video. Um, oh, something that I want to mention, though. So we've now finished Fat Fairy Principessa. Some of you have liked the reaction videos. They haven't performed very well, but this, this channel, as much as... Some people have said it's about clicks and views. It's really not. It's just about what I want to make. And the um, I think something good is like a palette cleanser in between people that I cover is to do a reaction video to either a Jubilee or cut video or maybe a, a separate video for the current topics in fat acceptance. So I'm going to do that next week and then we'll go into someone else. I would prefer to keep it somewhat positive the way that Fat Fairy Principessa was pretty positive, um, and I'm not looking for some, for, to go into anyone super toxic right now, just because I have a lot going on in my personal life, but I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you will enjoy the future videos, and I think that, I think that covers all my bases for today, so thank you for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.